believe it, baby. I was down with no way up, and I needed some help. Everybody breathing but not living, just existing. Well, and I needed some help. Somebody told me that Jesus will set you free. I tried it for myself and now I know what he did for me.
to rejoice and be glad in it. God is great and greatly to be praised. I wish I had a witness in the house. Y'all back here with me? Come on, let's go, Dion. Hallelujah. Great and mighty is our God.
to our God. To our God. Hallelujah. To our God. To our God. We exalt you. We lift you up. To our God. 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 Last time, to To our God. We bow His presence. Hallelujah. Come on up your mouth right here and give Him worship. Hallelujah. Awesome God. Awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for you today. Please join us. Don't miss the second part of this message next week. Blessings are intentional. Blessings are intentional. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Good morning. Good morning. Grace, peace, and blessings from God. This is another day that God has given us to interact with His Word. Don't touch that dial if you're on YouTube, that channel. Stay, call someone, tell someone there is a powerful word from God. We're going right into the Word this morning. I am filled with uh, a word that God wants me to get out to you. Somebody's praying. As a matter of fact, I solicit some prayer warriors right now that kind of covet me with prayer. But we know our God is more than able. So right now I'm going to go to the Word of God. If you'll go with me, I want you to grab your Bibles, your devices, and go with me to the book of James. The book of James, chapter 1. The book of James, chapter 1. Now, I'm going to, I have a translated version in some of my notes, but I'm going to read this uh, the way that I'm feeling it in my spirit right now. God's telling me to read this from the good old King James, so listen to this Bible. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire and wanting nothing. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of it, fashion of it perishes. So also shall a rich man fade away in his ways. Now watch this. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man when he is tempted, when he is drawn away of his own lust, and entice. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren, every good and perfect gift 
is from above and cometh down from the Father of life, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Verse 22. I'm going down to verse 22. Stay with me. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Verse 22 again. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For as long as the Spirit of the Lord will allow, we're going to speak from this thought. Are you ready? Blessings are intentional. Blessings are intentional. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. That's our sub point. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. When my wife and I were shopping for our present house, the house that we live in, when we finally came upon and found this house, she said something to me then that I know she has regretted at least once or twice over the last 20 years. What was it that she said? Well, let me explain it to you. When we found the present house we live in, we rem- I remember we walked up to the house, and my wife instantly fell in love with this house. And when she fell in love with the house, she said, this is the house that we like. We like. So she was speaking, it was the house we like. Well, God be the glory. Then, as we got into the house, as we went through every room, our eyes lit up. So I know she really liked the house. She said, I want this to sit over there in that little cubby. I want this color. I want this color scheme. And we walked through, and she was telling me everything she wanted in the house. She had a vision for how this house was going to come together. And then she looked and said, and that's what we're going to do. There was that we again, but it was her dream. But then, as we were walking around, I guess she saw the look on my face with all of this what we want, but really what she want. And she said something that I know she regretted. Here it is. She said, the basement is yours. Wow. Uh Uh-oh. Here it is. You know what happened? She did not know that I had plans for that basement, and they were not for it to be finished and looking pretty and be decorated with carpet. No, I already knew how I wanted my basement to look. So I went down there and I took a little piece of carpet. I got no carpet all over the wall, all over the floors, and I didn't do anything to the ceilings, and I got the same concrete floors because what I did is put one little spot of carpet there, put me a set of furniture, got me a big screen TV, bam, that was good enough. Watch the game, sit out. But in the back of it, I put all of my workout equipment. I got my workout bench with my weights. I got a stationary bicycle. I got an ab machine. And then over there, I got my basketball so I can dribble around when I want to dribble around. And then in the basement, I even made me a little pad so that I can run around. So what I do, I exercise, then I plop on that couch and watch a movie. Heaven for me. I did it on purpose every now and then. She'll look down those stairs and say, honey, don't you want to do something? No, I don't want to do anything. I set it up that way intentionally, and I'm happy with it. I have hours and hours and hours of contentment because it's just like I want it. I don't care if nobody else wants to come down there because I'm happy and I did it on purpose. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. That how is it that I can be so intentional and purposeful with my basement, how I knew I wanted it, and yet there's a whole lot of Christians, there are too many saints of God that live lives of unintentionality. They live lives where they are not purposed, they are not consecrated, they are not committed. What am I saying? God is an intentional God. He has set the world up with intentionality. God does not miss any any points. He has 
everything planned out. He has everything in its place. He set the blessings and the miracles and the supernatural responses in place. When you don't live with intentionality, when you just walk around and bump into a blessing over here and bump into a blessing over there, there's some people right now watching me. There's some things you are missing in your life right now. And the problem is, it's because you never went to the Word of God and got intentional about getting to the thing that God has for you. You miss some blessings. You miss the supernatural power of God. You miss what God wants to do in your life because God said, I created you to be intentional. I set my word up for folks who are not mediocre, but for folks who got filled with my anointing and want to do more in their life. Some of y'all need to perk up right now. God has something for you if you just get more intentional. How are you a child of God? Walking around talking about what you don't have when we have this full Bible of promises and blessings from God where God is telling us what he has prepared for us. God is an intentional God. I go to prepare a place for you. God is an intentional God. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and the door will be open. God set things up so we have to be intentional, purpose, committed and knowing what direction we're going so God can bless us. I sit around sometimes and I am astounded by the number of all you supernatural Christians who are sitting around and have never seen a miracle from God. As a matter of fact, not only have you not seen a miracle, you don't even know whether there is a miracle. It's something that this voice of the world can take away the understanding of God is a God of miracles. What do I mean by that? Your discernment is off. Your, your ability to see what God can do. God is a God of miracles. Don't you know that God does not have to be confined to natural laws? Uh, God is supernatural. Let me say that again. God is a supernatural God who can break any law he wants because he created the law. He is the one that has power. And I'm upset because there are some saints I talk to. You can't beat it into them. You can't, you know, down them and, and talk bad to them. I'm trying to talk to you nicely about one thing. Anything that you need, God has purposed for us to have. But he also has set a way for us to get what he purposed for us. You don't believe in miracles. Watch this. And the very salvation that you live right now is based on the miracle of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Think about that. That resurrection power from the dead. That power that changed you and me. Come on. You're not who you are because of some, you know, uh, 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 some a promise you made to yourself. Or you went out and made a resolution about I'm going to change. We're not strong enough to change on our own. How many know it's because God came into my life and I had the ability to change. And that same supernatural power that was in Jesus Christ. That's what I'm talking about today. You can't tap into something that you won't be intentional about. Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 19, says this. And behold, Luke's Gospel, 10, 19, I give you power, same power Jesus was resurrected with, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Did you hear what God said? We have power, and that power that we have is a power where we can tread on or walk on our enemies, walk on our circumstances, walk on the troubles in our life, but also we can walk on anything the enemy is doing. But I like the part when God says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. What are you worried about when God said, nothing shall hurt you? See, we need to understand that intentional saints have settled some things in their life. I thought about this as I was preparing this message, that there were times in my life when I look back over the wishy-washy periods and the periods where I say, oh, Lord, how could I have let the enemy do that, what he's doing to me? I hope you get that same feeling that you can look back on some things in your life and say, how did I let the devil do what he was doing? How did I stay up all night? How did I sit in fear all those days? How did I let him drain me like that? The reality is you have to settle some things so you can be intentional. What am I talking about? Intentional believers have settled some things in our faith. The first thing we've settled is 
power, where power comes from. You know why I'm not concerned about whether or not uh, I can get out of this situation or out of that situation is because I know intentional things we don't get where our strength is coming from. I know the world does not have the power I need. Come on, we tried it. You tried smoking your blunts. You you tried drinking. You tried running around and sexing it out. You tried everything else. You tried hollering at folk and yelling at people and bossing people. All that stuff you did did not bring you power. But once God got a hold of you, and you got the real power of God. The psalmist is going to explain this to us in Psalm 62 and 11. The psalmist said these words, Once have I heard it, God has spoken it once, twice have I heard it, that power belongeth to God. Power belongs to God. I like that text. Psalm 62 and 11 is telling us that power, I love what notice says, it didn't say God has power. It says all power belongs to God. It didn't say God needs power or God gives power. It just says power belongs to God. Here's what you need to understand. You need some power this morning. Power is controlled by God. Hallelujah. And you belong to God. So if you need power, the power you need is controlled by your Savior. The power we need is controlled by our deliverer. The psalmist said, power, come on, somebody ought to pray with intentionality. Pray like you believe that power is coming into your life. Pray when you lay hands on yourself that there's going to be a healing. Pray when you look at your children and believe your prayers are going to raise them up. The prayers of the righteous avail much. Believe when you talk to God that the words you speak are going to come to pass because that's what God says. Power. Intentional believers say, I don't worry whether God has power. I just line myself up with the word of God, and I know that power from God is going to come in my life. We settle some things. We settle the power. We've also settled the faith question. We settled whether or not we're going to live by faith. Ah, watch me, somebody. So, some of y'all are wishy-washy. There's some things you live by faith with, but they are easy things. There's some other things that you should live by faith and you fall apart. Why is that? Because you got to settle that question. You have to be intentional with your faith in God. Either God can or God can't. Do you hear me? You can't sit around guessing and talking about, well, I was stronger this week and that's why it worked. you got to go out and do what you have to do and know that I have to live by faith. Intentional believers know faith is the only way I can live. I am too out of sorts too many days to try to live by my own strength. Here's our example. I want you to go to Mark's Gospel, uh, Mark's Gospel chapter 10, verse 52. Mark's Gospel chapter 10, verse 52. If we start about that 46th verse, there is a story there about blind Bartimaeus. Now watch the story because it's very interesting. Blind Bartimaeus is a blind man who is of the lowest part of biblical society. He lays there. I don't know what his hygiene looks like. I don't know what happens when nobody puts anything in his cup. I don't know where he goes at the end of the day. There's some folk that, you know, they give alms to the poor, but he's sitting there. And then one day, blind Bartimaeus hears that Jesus is coming. I believe this blind man had been sitting around and he heard them telling stories about Jesus healing and delivering. And blind Bartimaeus was sitting there saying, I know I'm not supposed to talk. I mean, I know I'm the poorest of the poor. But all of a sudden, blind Bartimaeus' heart got filled with some intentionality. And he reached up and he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And everybody told him to shut up. But when you're filled with intentionality, you don't care what other people say. Come on, that'll preach right there. When you are filled with intentionality and know where you're going, you don't care what other people say. And blind Bartimaeus just kept shouting, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And when he, when he screamed out, the Bible says in that 52nd verse of that 10th chapter, it says, Jesus looked at him. These are the words. Thy faith has made thee whole. Contrary to what people say, faith is the substance. You can't sit around 
feeling dead constantly. I know our faith isn't by our feelings, but you know by your anointing when you're really walking in faith. I have had faith on me while I was fighting fear, but I knew I was walking in faith, so I stood there until that fear had to bow to my faith. Listen to what Jesus said to him. Your faith has made you whole. There's somebody out there right now, if you get intentional about your faith, God will take care of the rest. Because when Jesus heard, he didn't listen to the naysayers. He listened to blind Bartimaeus. And when blind Bartimaeus said, have mercy on me, Jesus said, have, he said, your faith has made you whole. And I like the last part of that, that, that 52nd verse says this, and he followed Jesus. He got up, instantly received his sight, and he followed Jesus. Jesus. Don't miss that. He got up, instantly received his sight, and he followed Jesus. Pastor, why are you staying there? Because some of you, God deliver you, and you only follow him for a short moment and wonder why your blessing isn't still there. Because Brian Bartimaeus had enough sense to know that the same one who delivered me is the one I'm going to follow. Can you honestly say that you've been following by your faith? Come on. I know, God knows we're human. And I'm not trying to discount those moments when we cry. I'm not trying to discount those moments when, when we are sitting there, you know, lost and contemplating how we're going to make it. But if you live with intentionality, all of a sudden your spirit, your soul, and your body will respond in faith. Somebody's getting faith by me speaking this right now. Your faith has made you whole. So we settle that power question. We settle that faith question. And then finally, we settle the question as to how God wants us to live. We See, some people accept what the devil's dishing out. You accept what life hands you because you don't believe that God wants you to live a higher standard. Can I help you out this morning? You don't believe that God wants you to be better than you. Can I help you out? Come on. I don't care what your surroundings are. I don't care what anybody's told you. Listen to the word of God. I'm talking about people who act with intentionality. They get the word and they follow. They become intentional. I want you to know Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. I love this verse. Here is how I know I don't ever have to live down. There's always more in God. That verse says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works that he prepared in advance that we should walk in them. Now listen to that because that's powerful. Here's what he said. I have been created. I told you God's intentional. So he created James Duncan. I don't know what your name is. He created you. He knew my flaws and my flaws. My flaws and my flaws. He knew where I was going to be tempted. He created me with the ability to walk in good works. Meaning that if I'm going to walk in good works, it means I have to be living a good life. I live a good life by attaching myself to that power and that faith. And when I'm living a good life, follow me, when I'm living that good life, it means that I live a good mental life. See, God can't expect you to talk somebody else off the cliff if you're walking around worried all the time. So what God says is, I've given you my peace. I've given you great. So you don't have to accept a life of constant anxiety and worry and struggling. I, I was telling the Bible study class, if you watch me in Bible study, I just learned about something called uh, uh, pandemic delirium. That's what it is. Pandemic delirium. Pandemic delirium. Delirium is when I lose consciousness of my surroundings, my environment. And when I get delirious about my future, I get delirious or off kilter about where I am. It's almost like this pandemic is squeezing itself around me. I, I can't handle this not being normal much longer. And uh, pandemic delirium is, is, is the story that is attached to it is when this 12-year-old girl, 12 years old, heard a voice saying, kill herself. And the parents had to have her checked out. And when they checked her out, they found out she had hopelessness. And listen to me. And the only reason is she couldn't go to school. Do you know that the enemy will come in and try to destroy you if you don't understand God created us for good works. He created us to have 
finances? How are you going to walk in good works if you can't help the poor? You can't help anybody if you're poor. So if you're sitting there not having, it's because you haven't been intentional mm, about how you get your money. Come on. The Bible says you can listen to all the scriptures in the world. But the Bible tells us that if we give to God, he will give back, press down, shaking together, running over, open up with all kind of intentions. God said, I've laid out the plan. All you have to do is follow it. And if you will be honest, come on, be honest. There's never a time in your life, I can tell you in mine, that I've tried God and did what God said, and it didn't come back the way God said do it. You have to be more intentional. A good example of this is David. You know, uh, when you think back on King David's life, David was a young man who found himself sitting as a shepherd in the fields. And even when Samuel came to anoint the king after God's intentional plan had been kicked in that David was going to be the king, they didn't think to call David because David had been sitting in the fields and he had been getting intentional with God. You want to know where David's power came from to kill the lion and to kill the bear? Can can you see it? Can can, can you see the stars and and, and maybe hear an owl, you know, in the middle of the night? and, And can you see David just sitting there with his staff, and all of a sudden he gets this connection with God that God can't show people who are not serious and intentional. And as he's sitting there with this connection to God, the words start coming out of him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. I, I believe that the Spirit of God just flew those words through David's spirit. And David began to speak out those words, and all of a sudden, a bear came, but he was too filled with the Spirit of God. He took his staff and killed the bear. He killed the lion. So when he came to the lion, it was nothing to kill the lion, because he had already been so close to God that he knew God had the power for him to do it. And he killed Goliath. And then David, who had no royal lineage, who had no reason, no rhyme for him to be the king over the United Kingdom. David became the king because God said, I prepare these things in advance. Uh, NIV said he prepared, uh, we're still in Ephesians 2, again, those things in advance. I like the fact that God has prepared it. So if God prepared it, it means God's intentional. For us to get it, we have to be in you know, and that takes us, to, you know, and, and David said to us in Psalms, I got to just say this because I, I got to move on with this hit me to the Holy Spirit. Psalms 37 and 25 is why David could say, I once was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken of God's seed begging bread. When you get intentional about who you are in God, the blessings start flowing in. David lived blessed until he took his eyes off God and start living with his flesh. But we can change all that today because in this book, this little epistle of James is some of the most powerful words in the Bible that teach us how to live intentionally. This book is filled with principles from the first chapter to the fifth. And in the first chapter, the chapter that we're in tonight, this morning is a chapter that says he has the, the chapter that says all of the other four chapters follow the footprints of what's in that first chapter in the book of James. And the verse that brings up our sub point, blessings are intentional, but verse 22 of that first chapter, come on, you know it just as well as I do. Be ye doers of the word and not just hearers. That covers it. It almost covers everything God said we have to live. If you just live that verse, you'll have power. Be a doer of the word. Don't just listen to preaching. You know, in this pandemic age, I was even talking to some of my members, you get, now that you have a smorgasbord of preaching, you don't stay somewhere. You might listen to me, then you flip to somebody else, then you flip to this one, and you don't ever get set where God wants you at. But don't just listen to preaching. Be the preaching you listen to. Don't just listen to preaching. Walk in the preaching. God said, be a doer. If I were to bring it into today's vernacular, it is our sub point. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Have you seen those people who they talk a good game? 
But if you get them on the court, they can't play a lick. Oh, yeah, I, you get them on the court, they can't even, they can't shoot, they can't run, they can't do nothing. But if you're just sitting at a restaurant, they'll tell you words and stories because they're hearers and talkers but not doers. You ever saw the kind of people that talk a whole lot, but when it's time to do the work, come on, I know us church folk know them. When it's time to do the work, you can't even find them. Because in this epistle of James, God is going to give us some principles, and I better get to it because I'm excited about this. God's going to give us some principles that can bless you as you go through this text today. Let me give you some points real fast. Write these down. If you want to be an intentional Christian, uh, I'm not going to be able to finish this message today. But I want you to know that it, it's in my spirit and it's going to bless you the next two weeks. I need you to tune in and make sure you get it. The first point is if you're going to be an intentional Christian, someone who gets the blessings, you have to learn how to be comfortable in the war. It's right there in that first chapter. Learn to be comfortable in the war. If you're going to be an intentional Christian, not only must you learn to be comfortable in the war, you must learn to be humble in your heart. Be humble. In your heart. And thirdly, in this text, if you're going to be an intentional Christian, you must learn to be a doer, not just a hearer. Come on, I know this sounds good, so let's unpack it. Let's unpack it. Let's go through it. So, first of all, there's several men named James in the New Testament. Um, there are two particularly that are in the circle of Jesus' 12 disciples, close to Jesus Christ. That is James, the brother of John, who is the son of Zebedee. You remember John and James, the sons of thunder. And then there is James of Alphaeus. And when you look at James, the son of Alphaeus, he's also one of the disciples. But can I tell you, neither one of those are the James that wrote this chapter, this, this book, because it's, it's almost puzzling. It's a strange thing, because the James that wrote this book is James the just, or James the righteous, or James who was the half-brother of Jesus Christ. The reason I said strange is because you never see in the Bible where while Jesus was on the earth, he was following Jesus, and yet he became a prominent person in the New Testament church. In the church of Jerusalem, the mother of all church, James became the leader of that church after Peter was martyred. James was the leader. You can go through the book of Acts and in Galatians, you can find references to James the just, James the righteous, because James was the person who led this church of believers who were scattered. He led this church of um, messianic believers who were being persecuted by Orthodox believers. So the Messianic Jews or the Jews who believed in Jesus were being persecuted by the uh, Orthodox Jews who did not believe in Christ and his power. So these were still Jews. And so that's why I always tell people the first lesson sometimes we have to learn about being intentional. Don't think everybody who got a Bible thinks like you. Don't think everybody Believes like you. Don't think everybody's in your corner. Everybody's trying to help you. You might say, Pastor, we got the same Bible, yeah, but we don't have the same relationship. Uh-huh. See, some people out there can't relate to your level of faith is because they may have a part-time relationship. Can I hear from those? See, part-time relationship means that, you know, I, I, I listen on Wednesday, I listen on Sunday, and I may come back on Wednesday. Come on. You're down to a church schedule. You, you got that church thing down. You know, when you grew up, you know, I, I go here. Since we got no afternoon services, you on the Wednesday and the Sunday. But Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Friday, we can't find you. God can't find you. Well, that's why we can't be the same because you got a part-time relationship and I got a... Uh, I got a, I need the every hour relationship. Anybody out there, when I get up, I need him. When I'm going through, I need him. Every moment of my life, I need him. Some people want to only have him every now and then, but I need to have God. I need to know God is with me every moment or I'm not going to make it. Anybody know what I mean? And it's good to know he's with you because sometimes even when you drift off and slip away, he taps you on the shoulder and tells you, I'm still here. And everything's all right. And not only that, we might have the same Bible. Not only we don't have the same relationship, they may not have the same testimony. 
There's some folk out there, they've never been through anything with God. They don't know what we're so excited about. God may have done a few things to their life. Remember I told you that mediocre Christians, God is so good, you got to bump into them, bless it every now and then. You know, walk over here, and God said, I'm tired of this person running around my church. Boom, bumped into a blessing. But it's not like you were intentionally looking for that blessing. And there's some people that live like that, just bumping into blessings your whole salvation walk. And so we got to understand, they don't have the testimony. My testimony is, I don't know where I'd be if God was not in my life. So you can't relate to me. So James wrote this book, and we're going to get into it, because James wanted to talk to this church. And James was martyred. Um, I don't have time to tell that, to give you that story, but James was martyred for his faith. So James had a right to write this. James was influenced, even though he didn't walk with Jesus, by the Beatitudes. You can tell it all through the book. He was influenced by the wisdom of Proverbs. You can tell it. It's all through the book. And the first point that James wants us to know, if we're going to be intentional, get comfortable in the war. It's right there. James, first verse, a servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, my brother, and count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. First thing I want you to know is James' letter has a different greeting than Paul's letters. Because as I told you, James' letter was, letter was written to the Messianic Jews no matter where they were. He was writing to the whole Jewish community that had been scattered and were persecuted. I love that because as I'm preaching to you, and sometimes the devil isolates you and make you think you're the only one going through what you're going through. But when we communicate, you find out all of us pretty much are going through the same stuff. Somebody give you a fantastic revelation. If you got on your knees, that same revelation would have come to you. All I'm saying is that James wrote to all the Jews. This is a general epistle. It was speaking to everybody who's persecuted. And the first thing you want to tell us is get comfortable in the battle. Some Christians can't be intentional. is because you're good until you get hit. You're good shouting. You're good praying. You're good praising until you have too many days where things aren't going right. Then all of a sudden, all that faith you were talking, all that moaning you were doing, all that stuff just goes out the window because of the fact that you don't understand. you got to get comfortable. There's a war going on that you are a part of whether you want to be or not. You need to understand this war started in heaven and when the devil, when Satan tried to take over the throne of God, and of course God, having all power, just had to speak him back down to his place. But Satan never got over the fact that he was kicked out of heaven and cast down. And for some deluded way, he's trying to continue to fight God. So now that we belong to God, he is fighting us. We have battles with our flesh. Battles with world philosophy, battles with the devil, the enemy of our soul. And the first thing I want to tell you is you'll never get strong until you quit hiding from a battle you can't hide from. There was a young man who was in the Vietnam War, and they were on the front line in a bunker, and they were fighting from this a, a, a machine gun bunker with, had them pinned down and they were fighting from this hole and all of a sudden the enemy came and dropped a shell close to them and it blew up and this young man got injured. He got hurt. And so his sergeant looked at him and it had knocked his helmet off and said, look, go to the rear of the battle and get some rest because I see you're hurt. And all of a sudden the the man started crawling, if you could see him, on his way out. The sergeant said, oh, no, uh, leave your gun here. We might need it. So he laid his gun down and started crawling all the way to the, the enemy was in the north. He crawled all the way to the south in the back. He got to the back of the battle, the back of his line, and all of a sudden another shell dropped and two men died on each side of him. He crawled out of there. And he started crawling. He crawled over to the, the west side, and he got to the west end of the battle. And over there, there was more machine gun fire, and he put his head down. And then all of a sudden, he crawled over to the east side of the battle. When he got to the east side of the battle, you guessed it, more bombs were being dropped. 
That man turned around with blood coming out of him, crawled back up to the front of the front line, told the sergeant, give me my gun back, put his helmet on. And the sergeant looked at him and said, didn't I tell you to go to the rear and rest? He looked the sergeant in the face, very disrespectful, said, Sarge, there is no rear. The only way I'm going to survive is I got to fight. And then he said, and I got to fight or die. Listen to me. There is no rear. You can't sit home and cry. You can't sit down and say, I'm not going to fight this battle. I'm sick, so I'm just going to lay here and die. I'm going to let the enemy just keep me sad. I'm going to keep moaning and groaning. No, you better wake up. There's a war going on. And you got to learn there is no there is no rear. This man learned something. I'm hurt, but I'm still fighting. I'm going to fight for my blessings. Oh, I hear somebody. I'm going to fight for my children. I'm going to fight for my sanity. I'm going to fight for my finances. I'm going to fight for my place that God has. Any fighters out there, I'm going to fight till I get a hold of what God has for me. So the first thing James wants you to know is you can't get out of a war. You can't run. And the second thing is you have to learn to fight. And sometimes you got to bring it. Somebody say bring it. Some days you can't wait till the devil start taking your stuff before you learn how to fight. Some days you got to get up and be on the offensive. You got to get up and start right off. Quote some scriptures and run that joker out of your life. What am I talking about? When I was growing up in a Christian household, the only game we could play in my house was war. I don't even know if anybody ever plays it. it it's a card game we used to play. And war was a game where when we played it, um, what, how, how the game was played is we would just throw cards out. And as we threw cards out, there would be, uh, if somebody hit the same card, if two people hit the same card, then what we would do is we declare war because both of us had the same amount of money. So we'd sit there and we'd take three cards in our hand and we would sit there with the three cards in our hand and say, I declare war. So I'm sitting over here, he's sitting over here, I declare war. And as we threw the cards out and threw the cards down, I declare war. Whoever had the largest card at the end of the war, they were the ones who got the blessing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I declare war. Some of you have to get up and declare war on the devil because you both are going after the same thing. But the problem is it already belongs to you. So what I need you to understand is I declare war. What are you saying? I declare war and I'm not giving up. And remember I told you whoever had the largest card was the one who would get the pot. Here's how you do it. I declare war. And when the devil backs up, say, and in the name of Jesus. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. The name that's above every name. The name above all things. In the name of Jesus, I declare war. And when you say the name of Jesus, he is going to run. Once you learn to be comfortable in the war, you can then learn what it means to have joy in the midst of sorrow. James said it this way, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you can be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. The point I want you to see is you can learn to have joy in the worst circumstances. I know I got a witness. It will be so you will learn how to laugh while the devil's putting pressure on, and he'll wonder why you're not upset about the pressure. It's because I've learned already that this is a war. I have power. I've been intentional about my direction, and I know that I'm going to get blessed because of what God has done in my life. you got to learn how to have joy by trusting God. There was this young girl. Um, they had boarded a plane to go from Florida to Hawaii. And this young girl was on the plane. Everybody boarded. It was a nice day. And as this lady and her son got on, they noticed the young girl sitting by herself. And she turned around and said, hey, uh, would you like to come sit with us? And the little girl said, no, no, I'm all right. And then as the plane took off, they ran into a storm. 
I'm talking about a storm unlike any. It was one of those ones where the plane went up and all of a sudden it would drop and it felt like your stomach was in your throat. And the captain came on and said, look, it's rough now, but there's a little more rough patch up ahead, but the plane can take it. Just as he said that, there was a banging noise on the outside of the plane. The lights started flashing. Everybody was screaming, and they had to put the seatbelt sign on in it, and some of the, the oxygen things dropped down. And all of a sudden, everybody held on, the, and the pilot called up, hold on, hold on, we're going to be okay, we're going to be okay. And all of a sudden, this lady said, oh, and she grabbed her son. She said, oh, that little girl's by herself. She must be scared to death. So she ran in the back to her surprise. The little girl was sitting there playing with her doll. She had a seatbelt on. But she was playing with her doll. And the lady said to her, I said, little girl, what are you doing? Don't you want to come with us? She said, I'm all right. She said, no, come. So she made the little girl come with her, sat her between her. And as she was sitting there shaking, she looked at the little girl and said, where are your parents? And the little girl looked at her and said, that's why I'm not scared. My dad is the pilot. And he said we're going to be okay. So if my dad says we're going to be okay, then... We're going to be okay. Some of y'all got to get like that little girl. If your father, find the verse, says that it's going to be okay, I don't know what your storm is, but if God said it's going to be okay, I guarantee there's a word in there. You can get intentional and build your life around that promise so you know it's going to be okay. Here's what he said. My dad said it's going to be okay, then it's going to be okay. You got to find that verse. Uh, what of his sickness? Then he said, by his stripes I'm healed. You got to fasten your mind around a word until you are living intentionally. Demons on the right, demons on the left, trouble in the front. But you're thinking about what the word of God said, and you're getting blessed through the word of God. Hallelujah. Live intentionally. That's our first point. Get comfortable with the word. Count it all joy. When you fall into darkest temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. I, w- I want to close by giving you this. The only real faith that works is tried faith. You don't even want a faith that hasn't been tried. There's some of us standing strong now because we've already been through it. We already know what it is. I found an interesting verse on my clothes and it's just exciting. But Exodus, the 14th chapter, you remember the story where Moses had the children of Israel. There were mountains on the side. Pharaoh was coming behind, and the Red Sea was in front of them. In that 14th chapter, around the 12th verse, the children of Israel start saying, Moses, didn't I tell you to leave us alone? Leave us, leave us back in Egypt. Now we're going to have graves in the desert. And Moses looked around, and he gave them that famous verse. You've heard it before, fear not. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord for the, that he will show you today. For the Egyptians that you see today, you will see no more. I was mesmerized by that verse. Those principles, those points, stand still. Fear not. That's power. But do you know what I found putting this message together? That next verse I hadn't seen. You know what God said? God said, so Moses turned around. Here's what the verse says. Moses turned and cried to God. That 15th verse. He cried to God. And the Lord looked at him and said, why are you crying to me? Tell the people to move forward. There it is. Did you see what happened? God said, don't cry. Lift your staff. Split the Red Sea and just keep on moving. He said, I already brought you out of Egypt. You already saw the plagues. You already saw my power. Quit acting like I can't get you out now. Some of you, God is telling you that right now. Move forward. God said, don't be crying to me. Tell the people to move. That's my assignment for you this morning. Move. Be intentional. And God will take care of the rest. Let me close with a word of prayer this morning. I'm going to have to pick this message up. We only finished our first point. Be comfortable in the war. As soon as I get my musician to give me some pretty music here, we're going to go out with a prayer. Oh, there it is. Come on, this is good. This word has touched you. Let me know. Because some of you, God just is inspiring you to live intentionally. And the rest will be taken care of. God said, I'm an intentional God. I've already set the place. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you today for everyone who is listening. 
Fill them with a fresh anointing. Let someone get up from where they are and walk out with a new power. In Jesus' name, amen. Go to our website if you want to become a member. If you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, can you pray this quick prayer with me? That's all it takes. Just say, Lord God, I believe. Come on, say it. Lord God, I believe you died for my sins. Rose again with all power in your hand. I am saved. Come on, say it loud. I am. Oh, that confession will bring you into the family. Get on the horn. Share with somebody. Tell someone to go to our YouTube channel. Subscribe. Ring that notification. Help us take the word. But today, you just learn to live intentionally. God bless you. Talk it to him and leave it there. I was down with a new way up and I needed some help. Everybody breathing but not living just existing. Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus will set you free